say God is in control. Say it again, God is in control. Understand tonight that knowledge is learned from looking around. Wisdom is learned from looking up. And knowledge comes by study and wisdom comes by prayer. Ah, the Bible teaches us, if my people which are called by my name would just offer themselves, pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then when I hear from heaven, I promise you I forgive your sins and I bring killing to your land. But then the word of God also teaches us to study, to show ourselves approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So the more I study this word, the more I fall in love with this word. And the more I fall in love with this word, the more I want to know about this word. Aren't you glad to know that Jesus Christ is that word? Somebody say, yes, he is. So when trials come, my brothers and sisters, and ask God for wisdom. And as you pray, ask in faith. Give God thanks for giving you the wisdom. Not just when you get ready to preach, and not just when you get ready to witness, but every day of your life. You ought to ask God. Listen, this is another part of my prayer. I know you don't want to say, what kind of prayer you pray? I pray long prayers. But listen, here's another part of my prayer. Because I go back to Deuteronomy 33, 24, and 25, when he told Asher, whose name means uh, best blessed. He said, I'm going to give you shoes of iron and shoes of brass. He said, the place that I'm sending to you indeed is a prosperous place. But at the same time, there are some mountains with some jagged edges. But don't worry, Asher, because I've already given you the shoes. I've already given you the ability to walk through those rough places of life. But he didn't stop there. And verse number 25 said this. He said, and even as your days go, so shall I strength be. In other words, Asher, before you ever see the next day, God said, I've already measured that day out. And I've already given you the grace that you need to get through that particular day. I wish you look at somebody and say, that's how I made it through the day. Because of the grace of God, the favor of God that God has given unto us. Somebody clap your hands and give God some praise. <laughs> Number four is the word enthronement. Somebody shout enthronement. Because James said, count it all joy. I've learned, my brothers and sisters, that in difficulty, in sorrow, and pain, and perplexity, you can learn to live as a king. The Apostle Paul says something in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse number 17. He said that you and I are to reign in life. So God wants you and I to have dominion over all things. But if you do not bear the cross, you cannot wear the crown. Somebody say amen. Uh, yeah, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Jesus said this, you can't reign with me if you don't suffer with me. So you got to go through some things just so that God can show you he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And at the same time, enable your faith to grow in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Number five is the word enrichment. Somebody shout enrichment. The word of God said, but let patience have her perfect work. I love this word. That you may be perfect. And that you may be entire wanting nothing. The word wanting, brothers and sisters, in this particular verse does not mean desire. It means necessity. God will always meet our needs in his own timing. God, my brothers and sisters, wants to give us riches, but you can't carry the harvest. Somebody shout hallelujah. He is in control and my faith is in God. So the problem with many of us is that we want it and we want it all now. Sometimes I listen as even as ministers that when we pray for individuals, we we'll say right now, Lord, right now, Lord. But we may not understand that God might have them in that particular place just to get them to grow just a little bit more. Somebody say yes, 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 yes. And that's the reason so many people, brothers and sisters, are up to their eyeballs in credit today. They're buying things they don't need with money that they don't have to impress people that they don't even like. So God says, above all things, that he wants us to be able to endure. Somebody shout, endure, and endure, and endure. He said, and I will give you the real riches of life. You see, you cannot pass the test, my brothers and sisters, of life until you roll, enroll in the school. What I learned as a, a teenager, they call the school of hard knocks. But look at somebody say, don't despair. Because in actuality, brothers and sisters, it's in that school that you're going to find enjoyment. It's in that school you're going to find enlargement. It's in that school you're going to find enlightenment. It's in that school you're going to find enthronement. It's in that school you're going to find enrichment that will last not just for today, but it's going to last you for a lifetime. Oh, I worship your father. It was the theologian Anto Diblius that said something like this. He said, God does not need his children around hardship 
He leads them straight through hardship. Somebody say, go through it. Don't try to dodge it. That's what David said, yea, though I walk through. He didn't say that the valley was his place of habitation. He didn't say he was going to camp out there. He said, but what I got to go through, I got to go through, and I'm not going to do this thing on my own. He said, because God is with me. I'm so glad to know that God is with me on tonight. How about you on today? Amen. When nobody else is there, I always know that God is right there. And I'm so glad I don't have to come to 1703 South Benoist Street to get in the presence of the Lord. I'm so glad Paul said to us in Corinthians that he walks in us and he talks with us. So I thank God for the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to say amen. But Jesus leads. And in the midst of hardship, my brothers and sisters, he is nearer to them than ever before. Now, that's a striking way to put it, brothers and sisters. Not around hardship, but go straight through it. Somebody shout straight through it. You see, if we want to be like Jesus, we must learn how to endure like Jesus. Understand that God has a purpose for your life. Ooh, the Holy Ghost is trying to take me a different way. And that he has destiny for your life. And you cannot allow the enemy to detour you from your destiny in life. Wherever you're at right now, I promise you that God already knows all about it. So we need to persevere under the pressure as Jesus Christ persevered. Ah, the word of God teaches us the enemy come not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The only reason the devil show up to mess with you in your life is to take away from you, to try to destroy you, to try to kill you. But we can't stop there because the latter part of that verse said, Jesus said, but I am come. Look at somebody say, I'm so glad there is an I am. I am always operating the present tense of the verb to be. God, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Somebody clap your hands and give God some praise. And so your deliverance is on the way. If it hasn't happened already, the Bible teaches us there's going to come a time, my brothers and sisters, where every one of us are going to have to learn how to endure like Jesus Christ. No one in history deserved to be more honored and more respected than Jesus of Nazareth. And even Jesus said, foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have nowhere to lay down his head. The eagle-eyed prophet Isaiah looked at Jesus and said, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was up all here. And by his stripes, all 351 stripes, it was laid up on his back. Hallelujah. By his stripes, that you and I are healed. Our sin sick soul has been healed. Our bodies can be healed. Our spirits can be healed. Our minds can be healed. The blessings of the Lord that make it rich and that of no sorrow that sell it up on us can bless our children, our children's children. We have that plan of salvation, not just for you and I, but for our entire family, simply because of the blood of Jesus. Somebody shout the blood still yet works. And yet, my brothers and sisters, he was treated with contempt. And the Bible says he was put to death. So, if we are doing like Jesus, our own battle scars will be the righteous and beautiful wounds of those who have taken a courageous stand against this evil society. Our wounds, brothers and sisters, will be like his. Note now, because life is a journey for all of us. And that journey, my brothers and sisters, is not always easy. There are hard days, there are some difficult nights that you got to face, and sometimes there are weeks and months, and sometimes it looks like it go for years and years and months and years where the road seems to lead us from hardship to another hardship. No one, brothers and sisters, in the midst of this life gets a free ride, hallelujah, no one is exempt from the troubles of this world. But Jesus said it like this, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, your heart represents your will. It represents your emotion. It represents your intellect. He said in the midst of all your emotions, what you know about God, he said don't let your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. I wish you'd look at somebody and tell them I got resurrection power down inside of me. And if Jesus could go to hell and get up out of the grave, hallelujah, walk out of hell. I promise you, what little bit of hell we go through on this earth going God will make sure that you're coming out of that particular thing. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, when we are discouraged, we can feel like giving up and walking away from the Lord. In verses 16 and 17 of 2 Thessalonians, Paul prayed now that they would be encouraged and be stabilized in the Lord. I hear this scripture all the time in my spirit every day. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So in order now to grasp the full impact of this prayer, we need to back up to verse number 13 in the text read in your mission tonight. There we will find a message of encouragement now that speaks to us in this 21st century. But we ought to always, not sometime, not just on paydays, not just when you're feeling well, but we ought to always thank God for you, brothers, loved by the Lord, because from the beginning, God chose you to be saved. You ought to clap your hands. Look at somebody say, God chose me to be saved. 
Say it again, that God chose me to be saved. So the whole system, brothers and sisters, of Christian theology tonight can be found in these verses. Everything we believe is here in tightly compressed fashion. The key phrase that I want you to know tonight is God chose you to be saved. When everybody else dissed you, when everybody else kicked you to the side, God chose you to be saved. In spite of my past, God chose me to be saved. So that speaks now of the sovereign grace of God in the midst of salvation. Did you know God chose you to be saved? If he had not chosen you, my brothers and sisters, you would have never been saved at all. Sometimes we speak of the words of, I found the Lord. But if he had not found us first, we would have never found him at all. Clap your hands and somebody shout hallelujah. So salvation now, brothers and sisters, begins with God, not with us. He chooses us and then we believe. Salvation is all about grace. It's all of God all of the time. I worship your God. These two verses that are in our text tonight lead out five stages of stepping out salvation in the broadest possible sense. Number one, he said you were loved. Number two, he said you were chosen. Number three, he said you were called. Number four, he said you believed the gospel of Jesus Christ in verse number 14 and 15. And then number five, he said you share in Christ's glory. In other words, because God saved you, because God redeemed you, because you've been chosen, he said you share in the redeem or the redemption of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but you get to share in his glory. In other words, you get to see the grandeur majesty of God working in the midst of your life and your life situation. So when we see things now, brothers and sisters, I promise you get ready to wrap this thing up. From this perspective, it tells us that God has a purpose in history. He's not just making it up as he go along. No, that's the world we travel, but we don't walk by faith. Everything in the universe plays a part in the outworking of God's plan. This, my brothers and sisters, ought to give you and I now enormous confidence as we face the uncertainties of day by day. If you believe, my brothers and sisters, that everything in your life is a hit and miss affair, you would think that the events of each day happen just by chance, then you're going to be a prisoner of your own, a prisoner of your own circumstances. So look at somebody tell them, God orders our steps. The word of God teaches us a good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. The word steps means uh, the advancement of life. So God said if we're going to advance in life, we got to have him ordering our steps. I don't know about y'all, but I'm still trying to recover from some of the mistakes that I made years ago simply because I did it Tommy's way. I did it Fred T's way. But I am got too old now. I need the Lord to error, error every one of my steps. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah again. Uh, no, now because you'll be up when things are good and you'll be down when things are bad. That's just a normal life. How wonderful to rest now, though, in the knowledge that our God is working out his plan in us that happens to us. The good, the bad, the ugly, the positive, and the negative, the happy and the sad. He said through the Apostle Paul in Romans 8 and 28, and we know not some things, but he said we know that all things are working together for the good unto them that love the Lord, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Purpose means the end that is to be attained. Look at somebody say it's not over with, so don't count me out. Don't say that I lost the battle. No, the devil is a liar. As long as he's working in my situation, there's still hope, there's still joy, and there's still peace. And that's where you got to have that yet praise down on the inside of you. That when everything is going wrong, you got to pull that yet praise from that on the inside. Let the devil know everything that I'm going through, everything that I'm facing, I still got breath to give God praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so as I close tonight, in times like these, you and I need to stand fast on the truth of God's sovereignty. We need to hold on to the truth that's written down in the word of God. We have been tested to speak the truth of God's word. I'm sorry, I'm too old. I've been in this thing too long to not stand up for the truth of God's word. I don't care what the government vote in. I don't care what they vote at. When it comes down to truth, I got to stick with the word of God. But the Bible said that you should know the truth and the truth is going to, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, that the truth would make you free. Look at somebody say the truth is what's going to make you free. Uh, could you imagine what would happen up in Congress, what would happen with our senators if they could just get the truth of God's word down on the inside of them? Could you see the joy that would light up the White House? Could you see the joy that could light up our houses? You and I just learned to stand on the truth of God's word. Clap your hands and give God some praise and shout hallelujah. 
And so, therefore, when the ground seems unsteady, my brothers and sisters, under your feet, remember what you've learned. Go back to the first principle. The Bible is true. God is holy. God is just. And God is good. Somebody say it with me. The Bible is true. God is holy. God is just. And God is good. His mercy, the word of God said, endures forever. So Jesus is Lord. His blood cleanses us from every one of our sins. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. He rose from the dead on the third day. He is now enthroned in heaven. And one day, my brothers and sisters, and I don't believe it's going to be long, he's going to return back to this earth. The Bible said he's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. I wish somebody shall clean me up, Lord, clean me up. Because if he clean me up, he's going to beam me up. Somebody shall hallelujah. And so now the God, brothers and sisters, who created me has a purpose for my life. Don't ever let nobody try to tell you you're nothing because in God's eyesight, he said that you're fearful and wonderfully made. You are somebody and God has a purpose for your life. All things, not some things, but all things work together for the good. The Holy Spirit of God, that's what I love about the Holy Spirit that operates in the third dimension of God. He intercedes on our behalf. He's God and I'm not God. He's sovereign over all the details of my life and I can trust him completely even my brothers and sisters when those details seem to be spinning out of control. Would you just look at somebody and maybe just give him a little high five and tell him God knows what he's doing. Did he not tell us he'll put no more upon us than he's, we're able to bear? He's doing it. God is working. God is working. We say the devil is working. But the thing you need to see is God is working more than what the devil is working. I worship your God. Uh, if we start magnifying God and don't magnify our problems, uh, all of a sudden God gets bigger and our problems get smaller. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do me a favor. Look at somebody say endure, dig in, and hold on. Uh, when trouble comes, my brothers and sisters, sometimes that's the best thing that we can do is to dig in and to hold on. To, and to all of our millennials, my brothers and sisters, even those that are watching through streaming live on tonight, the 21st century as a whole, I'm coming to tell you that God is telling us stand fast. Take God as his word. To, ah, his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. There is no reason, my brothers and sisters, to, to quit. There's no reason to give up. There's no reason to throw your hands up. You have purpose you have destiny your greater days are yet before you but the bible said your latter days shall be greater than your former days somebody clap your hands and give god some praise would you do me a favor and encourage somebody say endure as a chosen vessel you're not just in a party god chose you jesus loved us jesus encouraged us through the ministry of the holy spirit jesus christ gives you and i hope on tonight clap your hands and give god praise everybody so 